All right, folks, behind the camera is our new camera guy, Mike Spitzer. You've seen him on sheep hunts. You've seen him on Kansas whitetail hunts, Wyoming elk hunts, Nevada mule deer hunts, Nevada antelope hunts. And now he's coming with us for Alaska black bear. And so many of you ask when you see us do this, I think this is the sixth or seventh trip where we've loaded everything up, flown to Alaska, landed in a big airport, got on a little plane and flew out to an island and hunted from a skiff. And many of you say, what do you bring with? What do you leave at home? How do you get it all packed? Well, right here is everything we're bringing. We have to somehow get all of this stuff in these three Orion coolers and that big tote and that rifle case. I'm gonna walk you through real quickly everything we bring and why we bring it. You're gonna be out in the big cold Pacific life jackets. Don't trust that the person you rent this gift from has a quality life jacket. All right, it's always wet, right? Dry bags, dry bags. This dry bag right here has my O blank kit. In other words, this dry bag, every time we beach the boat, every time that we push the boat off to anchor it, in here is the necessary survival stuff. Marine band radio, uh, Garmin inReach, uh, a water filter, things that if something really went bad, we'd still make it. Now we're going to get into the food stuff. So what we've done, we've sorted Mike's meals. Marcus isn't here to pick out his meals, so he kind of gets the leftovers. Randy's meals, because of my liver condition, I'm on a low protein diet, so I'm eating stuff like, I don't even know what it is. Mike claims that he's going to make us some dessert while we're out there, so we have some of these items. My buddy Cody Rich, who does the, his podcast, he also owns this backcountry fuel box business. So he sent me two boxes of stuff that we're just gonna bring with us. I don't know what all's in there, Cody, so if we uh, get sick, it's your fault. Game bags, uh, you know I use these caribou game bags. You're gonna need bags for the meat, bag for the hide, bag for the skull. First aid kit. My kill kit, all my knives, all my Gerber utensils, everything is in there. Rubber gloves, container with my licenses, a pen, and a few other necessities. Binos and range finder for everybody. Loophole spotting scope. You can never have too many tarps, so we're bringing two. Rope, enough rope that uh, we could almost tow something from here. No one's ever had too much rope in Alaska. Lightweight tripods, puffer bottles, wind checkers, gun cleaning kit. We've had some instances, my buddy Joe jumps over the bow of the boat into seven feet of water. And I had that kit there, I was able to clean that rifle up as good as I could. But salt water doesn't do a rifle any favors. Gerber fillet knife, never forget these, sunglasses be out on the ocean it's not going to be fun to sit out there all day squinting like oh i can't see anything you're going to get a headache water container right we're on the ocean you're not drinking salt water so all kinds of stuff here for filtering and holding water catadine base camp filter sleeping bags and compression sacks bring one of these gerber multi-tools uh, Mike's sleeping bag, Mystery Ranch, uh, we have two Mystery Ranch packs, both Metcalfs, Mike and I each have one, high vis paracord, here, this is the rifle compartment, right, two Hawaii Alpine Mountain rifles with a box of ammo for each, a target, so that when we get there we can check, floating gun cases, all right, you're running around in a little skiff, spray of salt water coming up as you're driving across the pond there. I always keep it in here. You'll be glad you did, trust me on that. Oh, important necessity, mountain money. Fully sealed, don't want that to get wet. Wipe-a-dipes or baby wipes. 
after about day five, some of those come in really handy. A couple of these to cook in. Don't leave your fuel in here. You know how we all put our fuel can in there and then put this on top? Don't do that. TSA is going to call you and say, Mr. Newberg, you're in trouble. Uh, let's see. Gerber, uh, just a little, like, I don't even know what they call it. It's the cutting board and other stuff. When you're out on the ocean and you're running big ropes or lots of rope, you always want some pulleys to anchor off. Because if you don't do it right, the wind switches direction, you end up high and dry. Gorilla tape. Don't go anywhere without gorilla tape. Machete. So most of that stuff is going to go in here. And then we'll bring a couple tents. Uh, everyone will have their own tent. We're good friends, but we don't need to sleep that close to each other. Uh, this is a Nalo 2G Hilleberg. Uh, waiter boots, uh, Alaska, you can no longer use felt soled waders. So make sure your waders are not felt soles. I like to wear waiting pants. These are Sims waiting pants. I never want to push it right to the limit and get right up to my chest. So I don't use those. Here's Mike's. Uh, extra filter for the uh, base cam. And then this is probably the slickest thing I've been sent in the last year. I can't wait to try it out. Catadyne has this new, it's a, called the Bee Free. It's just a water bladder and it's got the filter built inside. How cool is that, huh? So I'm taking one of these with. And then people ask how much cooler space do you need? Well, we're going to fill these coolers full of lightweight stuff when we go up there. And when we come home, we need cooler space because hopefully we, Mike and I both have tags. So hopefully we have two hides, two heads, and a bunch of meat. So you got to have cooler space to get stuff home. What else? Water bladders. Don't fill these up and try to fly on TSA with them. They'll make you empty them anyhow. Enough. Lithium AA uh, batteries, that's just a small portion of them. Mike's tent, his sleeping stuff. Oh, GPS. I have a GPS that has all the nautical charts on it. So uh, when you're bobbing around in Alaska, in the Pacific, you like to have that. Here, you look at all these locks. Everything needs to be locked per TSA. So you'll notice that every key has tape and then one doesn't have tape, one has another color of tape. And then on these I say gold. I mean the gold key opens that. So when you get to TSA, they'll tell you, oh, you're fine. And then they'll take it back there and then they'll call you out and say, hey, I need the keys to open your cooler or your gun case. So if you keep everything color coordinated or tape coordinated in this case, tomorrow morning we're gonna be at Alaska Airlines with I don't know, about, by the time you have our camera gear and our carry-on bags, about eight or ten pieces of checked luggage, you don't want to get in line behind us at Alaska Airlines. You get a lot of sour looks, like, what's the deal? Oh, and another thing, do not FedEx anything to Alaska unless it's going to Anchorage or Fairbanks. Because FedEx, what they do is they accumulate everything in Anchorage, and once you get enough stuff gathered, then they'll ship it out to the small communities. So we have, in the past, thinking we we're gonna save some time and money, FedExed all of our stuff to Petersburg. It showed up the day our hunt ended. Just bring it with you. Fly Alaska Airlines, they're accustomed to all kinds of cargo. Just bring it with you. You know it's gonna get there. If it doesn't get there, the odds are you didn't get there. Once we get out there, we're going to do a bag dump of everything that's in our packs. And then we're going to do another kind of lay it out, kind of show you what we wear for clothing. Thanks for watching.